Hey, hey, how's it going guys? My name is Elwood and today we are looking at Curious Expedition, winner of a Best Indie Game Award a few years back and was suggested by a subscriber. And to answer the ultimate question, is it worth your time? So, Curious Expedition is a single player indie pixel art roguelike adventure RPG where you assume the role of a chosen 19th century figure, explore untouched destinations around the world with an objective to generate more fame than your competitors. You'll be traversing many different terrains, recruiting locals, fighting for your life and collecting never before seen treasures to bring them back home. So, aesthetically the game is definitely 16-bit inspired due to the design of everything in the game, giving it that old school retro feel except with incredibly polished visuals to really bring out that smooth, quality feel of gameplay. Colours used are very bright and vibrant to give an overall light-hearted feel to the game. Textures and detail are pretty good with a very high pixel art standard. The area artwork in particular for things like shrines, towns, combat and campfires are by far the best visual assets of the game and have been designed extremely well, giving incredible storytelling immersion to the player at all times. Lighting effects in Curious Expedition are also pretty good. They're only really present around campfires, shrines and a few other places but look very impressive regardless. The UI is also decent, quite a lot of information on screen but due to its compact design doesn't hinder your focus area or become annoying. Level layouts are overall very large, especially on the later stages. There are always a number of points of interest to explore, treasures to dig up and wildlife to fight. I do however find them a bit too large considering you have to manage your sanity resource as you play but we'll get into that later. Character designs are also pretty decent. Each character has a small yet charming pixel art design with the occasional movement on the artwork area now and again, but no real animations to speak of at all other than traversing the area map. This is of course due to the style of game this is. Animations wouldn't really be needed anyway so it's all good. I especially like the hexagon shape theme that they've gone for for the world map layout. It definitely gives an interesting twist to a game like this. Everything else visually speaking is overall very impressive. The OSTs in Curious Expedition are also pretty good actually. Very gentle, light-hearted and slow-paced soundtracks to complement the relaxing, immersive gameplay very well. The sound effects used seem to be specifically made for the game. You do get the odd orchestral sound effect here and there, but the general sounds used are clearly 16-bit inspired as well. The theme of the tracks definitely contribute to that pixel art feel of the game. Very similar to Minecraft soundtracks you could say, except with more beats per minute. Even the combat OST is pretty upbeat, yet relaxing at the same time. I also like how you hear the environmental sound effects to match the area you are in, like the deserts, tundras and jungles for example. A very immersive sound quality overall I have to admit. Everything else sound related is very high quality and fits your actions at the time very well, especially the area map sounds when traversing normally. I couldn't find one flaw at all from a sound perspective. Now for the gameplay. So firstly, Curious Expeditions does have a few difficulty options to choose from before you play. You can choose between Taurus Trap, Expedition and Certain Death Mode. Pretty much your generic, easy, normal and hard, except with much fancier names. I personally completed my first playthrough on Taurus Trap and that's not the easiest when you're first starting out and don't have a clue what you're doing. I now personally prefer to play Expedition as I've started to get used to how the gameplay works. The difference between each mod is mainly how fast you lose sanity, more enemy spawns and more nasty things happening to your party. Also on hardest mods, when you find the golden pyramid somewhere on your area map, you have to walk all the way back to your ship as opposed to the game doing it for you automatically, which is a lot harder than it sounds, trust me. Definitely stick to tourist trap mode when you first start, at least to get used to the game. Then move on to the harder modes later on. So, when you first start the game, you're giving a pretty good training level to explain how the game works. I'll be honest, it is quite a lot of information to take in considering the simple look of the game, but fortunately the training does explain everything you need to know before you go at it alone. Once done and you're ready to play normally, there is quite a large list of characters to choose from before you start. As I mentioned, each character is a famous 19th century figure. You've got Freya Stark, HP Lovecraft and Nikola Tesla, just to name a small few. 
Each character comes with different passives, inventory, combat dice and preset party to start you off, giving a different gaming experience each time you play. The main selling point of each character is to suit how you like to play the game. I personally prefer to play the combat based teams that start with more combat dice and usually come with a pistol or a rifle. But if anything, I feel you're given too many to choose from. Before each game you're giving a bit of dialogue to explain the purpose of the game, you're essentially part of an explorers club. They're about to erect a statue to the most famous explorer. You go up against four other random famous figures on a race to see who can generate the most fame over six expeditions and get the statue made in their honour. Well, if you don't die that is, and trust me, you're going to be dying a hell of a lot. Note, you don't actually interact with these competing figures at all. They're just essentially points on a screen that you have to beat in order to win. So once you've gotten past that short dialogue, you can then choose where you'd like to explore first, gain control of your party and play. The entire game is played purely through the use of a mouse, so pretty much anyone can play this game. As I mentioned, each game has a total of six expeditions to complete, in which you'll need to generate as much fame as possible. The short answer to this would be to find the gigantic pyramid in each area. This ends the expedition and generates fame. Start the new expedition, rinse and repeat. This is the extremely simplified version of course, but while you're on your way to complete this objective, there are plenty of other things to do while keeping an eye on that very important sanity bar at the top of the screen. Each time you take a step, you use up a bit of that sanity bar while increasing your field of view of the area. Doing so, you'll notice points of interest question marks until you get closer, different terrain that require varying amounts of sanity to traverse, and enemies roaming the wilds. The points of interest are quite random, but are extremely important. They can range from abandoned campsites, forgotten tombs, inhabited villages, or even the Golden Pyramid itself. You have a compass on the top left hand side of the screen to help you find the pyramid, but sometimes it's completely off, so make sure you don't take it too seriously. You have the inventory at the bottom for all the items you find which you can use for many many things, trading with the locals probably being the most important I'd say. When it comes to your sanity bar, this will always be in decline no matter what you do, but the two methods of replenishment are through sleeping or drinking slash eating. Being kind to the locals also helps you stay alive, as happy locals will let you sleep in their villages, they will trade goods with you and will even come with you on your journey if you're especially friendly. How happy they are is indicated by the standing icon at the top of the screen. When staying at villages, make sure you don't overstay your welcome, they don't like it. Another very big part of the game is the combat. When you end up in the fight with some local beasts, you enter into a combat screen. The combat mechanics are turn based dice rolls. Your character and party get specific dice to roll on your turn which can be used in multiple combinations to do different things. A very out of the box game design that I was very impressed with. What an absolutely brilliant feature added to the game. I personally didn't look up the dice combinations you can have for the combat, but even the dice combinations are pretty out of the box and when you realise them it does put a smile on your face. When you're completely out of sanity you can still move normally which surprised me, but I found that very bad things start to happen to you and your party. You become tempted to kill your pack animals and pets for food, party members develop illnesses and can die, and much more. So always try to never drop below 20 sanity whatever you do. So let's say you successfully explore the entire area, make it to the golden pyramid, good job you actually did it. If you didn't choose certain death mode, you'd be brought back to the UK, you choose a passive perk, sell slash donate any items that you found, then on to the next expedition. <laughs> if you can actually get through all six and beat all of your competitors fame, congratulations you win the game. There are of course lots of things I didn't mention in this review like combat dice can be used at certain points of interest, stealing from tombs causes curses that ruin the surrounding terrain, portals can be found to take you to some spacey area, stone circles can reveal points of interest for you and much much more. I'm sure you can tell just by looking at the game it has a huge amount of content that I'm definitely not going to cover entirely in this review alone. But overall the gameplay has a very light hearted challenging feel to it, is extremely rich in content and will provide you with a fresh gaming experience every time you play. So for the ultimate question, is it worth your time? The game is incredibly polished, offers very high replayability and provides very satisfying feelings of smooth progression. But the game isn't for the faint of heart and has a surprisingly steep learning curve as you progress. I'm going to give this game a 4 star or 82 out of 100. When I first turned the game on and played, one of the points I was going to write was suitable for all ages. But as I started to play, 
the game is a lot more difficult than it looks. So I thought, Better scrap that idea. <laughs> You'll find that when you play, if you have a pretty unlucky first expedition, like using all your food, you down one party member and didn't get any noteworthy items from the randomly generated points of interest, you may as well reset the game and try again. Because chances are, you're not going to make it past your fourth or fifth expedition unless you're very lucky. This is far from a bad thing of course, I can assure you. If anything, it makes the game overall better in my opinion, as it ensures you have your gaming head on, refines your tactical edge, and makes the game very immersive when playing. Comparing what I'm saying to how the game looks, I sound silly, I know, but it's the truth. On tourist trap mode, you don't need to be as switched on, but on expedition and above, there are many times where a simple mistake can be the difference between success or defeat. Simpler things like inefficient movement, holding back on certain dice rolls, and trading away items you should have kept, do mount up eventually and do affect your six total expeditions. But when you're playing efficiently, have plenty of food, have a whole party with two dice each, have plenty of tools, things to trade and inventory space, the feeling of smooth sailing in Curious Expedition is extremely addictive and almost euphoric. <laughs> the game is so RNG reliant on points of interest, perks to select and treasures you find that it really feels good when the RNG gods are in your favour. Overall, Curious Expedition provides a very immersive gaming experience, has clearly demonstrated why it's award winning, and is a game I personally would definitely recommend. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you want to see more games I'll be reviewing each week, and thanks again Tablet Brothers for the video request. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Let me know if my review matches your thoughts on the game. <laughs> but as always guys, all the best, take care.